that awesome intro. And uh, let's just get started right away. Illustrator facts us, facts us, 
the illustrations <laughs> uh, back and then animate them in Macromind Interactive because that's how low budget this PBS show was. But it was really super fun. And again, like the idea that anything can happen in animation and stuff with me. Um, and I think, you know, one thing I also sort of thinking back when you do a talk like this and you start thinking about the themes in your own work and, and one of the things I really learned from all this is, is like, I think I like this children's, um, you know, one of the things that always appealed to me about children's programming or, or animation is that children are natural surrealists, right? Anything can go, right? Anything goes together. But it's almost like these dream like statements where like in the normal world, it's like that can't go together or that doesn't make sense or it's out of scale, but in, in this kind of programming, um, everything was fair game. So I'm thinking of um, themes for this talk, which I understand is beyond. Mm. This whole the whole series is beyond. I was um, thinking that what, what this the work I'm going to talk about goes beyond reality. It goes you know um, into this dream space. It's not literal. It's about ideas that are about feeling things and not necessarily <coughs> seeing something explained to you. And so um, I come up with sort of theme for this talk, especially in light that we're here so early, um, and it's called. Surreal. Um, <laughs> horrible puns. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and, uh, and apologies to my you'll see his work uh, sprinkled throughout. But the idea that of surrealism and how we can make things um, with you know interesting juxtapositions in our work. So moving on to some um, recent work, or um, you know, there's no challenge that kind of asks you to, to think of things metaphorically or. Um, you know, there's no challenge that's better for that than perhaps designing a, a television title or main title for film um, or for a program. And I think, you know, that's because, you know, so many times uh, it's about getting the tone of the show. It's about inviting people into this other world. It's kind of like a bridge from reality into this, you know, this whole other um, worldview or environment. And you're kind of leaving your ordinary life behind. And so this show um, is, was on HBO. And um, I don't know if any of you know it, but it centered around um, a character played by Steve Buscemi named Nucky, who was kind of a kingpin. He was kind of this gangster, politician, or he basically ran um, Atlantic City in, in the time after the First World War, which, you know, sort of, uh, which, uh, the time of the War in the 20s and the time of Prohibition. And uh, at the time, I was working in, in New York, and what was fantastic is they, they built a, um, an incredible uh, set for this, you know, behind these shipping containers in Brooklyn, you go behind there, and there'd be this whole set, this whole boardwalk from, you know, from the 1920s, and you go in and out of the buildings and shoot, you know, everywhere. And you know, this was like a explained to me by Terry Winter that the creator of the show that this was this boardwalk is the microcosm of America at the time. You know, it it, it reflected the commercialism and the prosperity and like all kinds of classes were mingled there, and there'd be, you know. Organized crime, the CD part of it, the vacationers, and this commerce. And so naturally, one of the first ideas we had to open the show was like to show off this boardwalk. I mean, it's amazing. Like, it's a, you know, all these um, the signage and 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 what was going on there, and all the commerce and like the um, just the vitality of it. And this was a, a, one of the original storyboards. And the whole idea was also maybe we see it from the main character's eyes. Maybe we wouldn't actually see him. We wouldn't actually see Nucky. But we have him walk the boardwalk, he's the king of it all, and we see the whole place through his point of view. Um, so we, you know, they were very excited about this idea. We started prepping for shooting this idea. Um, you know, and the production of the design on this show is incredible. Like, they would be like extras, they would have vintage pantyhose or vintage, vintage hosiery and corsets and underwear for them. Like, all of the costuming and all the details of production designs so are just amazing. It was, you know, going to be um, quite quite an interesting shoot. And then, at one point, um, Terry and HBO uh, kind of gave a note that, hey, you know what? We 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 really don't want to do a montage. Like that does not really capture the spirit of the show. We want something that is going to evoke some curiosity and and, and make some people you know sit up and take notice. This is like you know a very interesting character. It's a very interesting story. And of course, like. You know, you when you hear a note like that, you're like preparing to shoot. You're so excited, you know, it's kinda like, ugh. You know, really come on, HBO, you don't want to do a montage. Like you can do a full montage, it's like, can't we do one, right? Like, can we shoot this? Um, but but you know, we went back to the drawing board with um, Terry and one of the directors, Tim Van Patten, 
And we really, you know, I asked Terry, like, what really is the show about? And he's like, well, you know, Nucky is a center and, and, and things don't, you know, he's a center and everything in this world changes around him. You know, you're going to go through some really turbulent times. And also, what's really important to the show is the idea of prohibition because the, the idea that liquor is outlawed is very important because the way Atlantic City's position on the water was, it made it um, a center for smuggling. And so that's the one thing that we always try to do while thinking of ideas. It's like, what could work for this show that wouldn't work for any other show? What, could we, what, what is ownable for this story? And it's like, huh, that seems to be a very idea, this main character and his future in liquor was something that we could really um, make iconic, right? So these are some early sketches of a totally brand new idea, scrapping an old idea, broke my heart. But like, you know, but like, what if we had this idea where he looks out into the ocean and all he sees are bottles of liquor? And surprisingly, I mean, that's what they went for. I mean, it's such a surreal idea. If you've ever seen the show, it's a completely, you know, a beautiful, you know, drama, very realistic. They don't have really any sexual effects going on where you would have something that's surreal. But this, you know, and this is something too, like that may not make sense the first time you watch it. You're like, what is that? what's happening? Um, here we are on a, on a New Jersey beach shooting Steve Buscemi, who's like an incredible sport where three piece vintage wool <laughs> suit. Hot day in the summer. <laughs> and then, like, such a great, great guy. Um, um, and there's uh, Jeremy, he's uh, one of our the visual effects supervisors, getting the bottles ready. We've got this crazy contraption that made them bounce around. Um, there's uh, Steve and I talking about uh, baby names. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Nucky is, is short for Enoch. <laughs> that didn't make the list. <laughs> Uh, well, we were still both on, and after we whisked away the hospital, you know, delivery, I was convinced I'd go to labor as soon as the sheep out. But anyway, this is what we ended up doing. Discovered um, 
where um, you know you've got all these like trappings of aristocracy like, being destroyed by the city, right? Amazing. Didn't really have a budget to build cathedrals and do these kind of shops. However, one of the things that we could do is you know play with the altar pieces of these uh, cathedrals, like maybe build you know take the language um, found in churches and monuments and in some of these um, cemeteries in France and Italy. You know, art at the time kind of baroque, kind of like really elaborate sort of scenes and the art that usually depicts kings and saints but put whores and pirates and thieves in them. And so this is a key frame that Alan had done, you know, kind of depicting or replacing um, and using that kind of iconography and that kind of language with um, some of the themes of the story. At the time uh, I was living in New York and one of the fun things that we love to do, we uh, were in the Chelsea Gallery District, is over for exhibits and this is Alan and crew um, at an exhibit by the artist Chris Cusi, who does this wonderful assemblage of takes all classic art that also mixes it with figurines, as you can see in the example there. And that was a huge inspiration for our sequence, which we then would board out um, with illustrations. And the reason I like to show this is that, you know, going beyond, beyond <laughs> things you find on the web, like we obviously were, were referencing classical art, but we would work with illustrators to make it into our own. So take the themes, but then tweak them so they refer to a lot of the um, things in the stories, you know? Um, and that way we can free ourselves from some of the things that are just you know, purely find already made, right? You can, you know, the illustration kind of frees us into going into our own space. And so you might have an inspiration from a figure like this, and then we'd have work with storyboard artists to, to create, you know, our version uh, representing death right here. And then we bring it into CG modeling, and so you have a model, and then you eventually texture and light that. Um, we had toyed with the idea maybe, I don't know, maybe we could find elves and some, <laughs> to actually carve these and maybe shoot them or something, or you know, find some sculptures. But ultimately, we did do this in um, modeling, and we found amazing artists who could, you know, um, render these things and make them very realistic. Uh, so here's the final piece. Well, Just want to call out Zach, 
back there. He's our, he's our editor. He did the end of the last last piece and then the end of the piece I'm about to show you. But it's hugely important, you know, to, to have um, you know the visuals are only a, a part of it. Um, the next piece is actually not a television show, but uh, the main title for a feature film uh, called A Monster Calls. And you know, a feature film it functions a little bit differently. Uh, the, the title for a feature film functions a little bit differently than a television show. Um, Something like Black Sales, we, we deliberately made things intricate because we knew that, well, hopefully, you always hope that that show will go on for years and years, and that there'll be something new, something to discover every time we do our season. Um, and for a feature, you know, the title sequence exists in a very specific place uh, uh, in the film at a very uh, specific moment, and isn't really meant to be seen over and over again, um, but instead to set up, you know, might even just set up, you know, the scene that holds it. Uh, the, so this this picture was directed by J. A. Bayona, uh, a Spanish director, and it's based off a very uh, popular book, um, A Monster Calls, and it's basically about this troubled boy who, you know, he has a, a sick mother, a, a difficult relationship with his grandmother, he's lonely at school, and so uh, the monster that the book refers to is his, you know, kind of friend or his ally he sees in this tree in the backyard, uh, and he, this tree would tell him various fables, uh, kind of parables, um, to teach them about things in life. And these were um, animated in this style here. We, you know, we didn't do these, but they were these wonderful, you know, sort of um, animated segments that were really uh, inspiring. And so one of the things Bayona wanted um, for this title that plays at the beginning of the movie um, is dealing with that kind of like um, both a literary style and also an artistic style, because the boy's main um, route of escape from his life is to sketch and sketch which he's an artist and and you know so he's constantly you know sketching in this journal and then so and Bayona uh, described the, the whole story as a journey so a lot of like and again very surreal right like symbols like windows and doors and going through keyholes and passageways it's because he saw this as a coming of age by the end of this whole movie you know it was you know an important step to his manhood and so um, this is one of our original um, storyboards where we were taking a lot of ink and trying to figure out transitions and go, you know working seamlessly um, through a journey um, and keeping some of the, you know a lot of the things abstract. This is something that goes at the beginning of the film. You don't want to give anything away. And then we had um, a shoot that we we were literally watching the paint dry here, um, where you know we're shooting and like. Um, you know, doing down shooting, and, and um, we had like some um, drawings that we would uh, done in wax, and we watched the way ink would like uh, react. This is my collabor collaborator, also uh, the co-director Grant, who's like doing a bunch of ink experiments. We do things like blowing with straw, you know, to get some abstractions and get some visceral na nature of the ink. And again, that goes back to like using the computer as a collage and not having, you know, what you can gain by doing things analog or in camera can also you know really give a lot of that sort of organic and tactile authenticity I think to a piece. Um, and then the, the heavy lifting came with in the edit where these had to seamlessly work together in animation and this is what resulted. Yeah.
and thank you again for, for Jose. It's fantastic tonight. Please come live here. Or <laughs> 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 off the canal. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is a piece I did years ago. Sorry, an SD. Sorry about that. Uh, and, <laughs> a lot of things change. Um, uh, for Herman Miller, for the campaign Get Real. Um, so this was a piece for Fairly Famous Advertising, and they had devised a campaign for uh, Herman Miller focusing on the classic furniture of the Eames, the uh, uh, Gucci, Alvar Alto, and George Nelson. And their whole sort of premise was like, you know, let's face it, there's a lot of knockoffs, right? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you buy real? Um, and they had this really fun idea. I uh, like comparing things that are real or not, or not, right? Super, super fun idea. And they're like, how can we tie this all together into a video piece to inspire people to, you know, to buy the original designs? Um, pull out this one from Charles <laughs> Eames. <laughs> everything, eventually everything connects people, ideas, objects. And so, you know, the, ch the visual challenge here was like, how are you going to connect all these, in a of these artists, all these designers in a cohesive way? And um, the answer was, you know, something to do with the, using something to do with the designer's hand. I mean, um, I think there's something really special about, you know, the original plans and like showing the hand of the designer as a tactile act. Uh, you know, and this was such a treat to work on. Like we went to the Herman Miller headquarters in Michigan, and I, I don't think I've had an experience quite like this before. But there was an archivist or a librarian, the archivist who came out and he had a white coat. Yep. And like talking for that wheel at a lab, and he'd say, "What do you want?" And we'd be like, "Can we see the original blueprints for you know this piece of furniture?" And you'd go back and get them. And we saw royalty letters from George Nelson. It was like, you know, like you all worked on something, and you're like, "Can we have your logo?" And they're like, can, "You know, can you go to the website." <laughs> <laughs> they had all the, they had archived all the direct mailing, the ads, everything. And so, um, what you know, it's like being a kid in the candy store at this place, right? It's like, oh, can we have this ad? Oh, you know, do you have the original tags for this? And you know, um, you know, some of the plans. This is crazy. It's great. So we got all that stuff together and took it back. And then um, with the idea that we connect them with the line of the de designer, this is what we came up with. 